Greetings, Klausewitz here. And in this video I want to talk about the range combat aspect of the Landsknecht formation and the firearm they used for it. So first of all I want to say firearms were already a thing in Europe at this point, even since many years actually. The thing is that earlier firearms were very clumsy, not very reliable, um, had very limited use, limited designs and also they were trying out things, developing things, refining um, aspects. Also it needed a role on the field. I mean bows, crossbows already suited the need for ranged combat so it wasn't really as like I said needed but it was very often used very often maybe not the right time but it was often enough used so that we had record of it the, um, in sieges in defending fortifications even attacking fortifications so more stationary scenarios but they were not the first using firearms on the field I mean the Harkenbüchse is already um, a known used weapon which is basically the predecessor of the Arkebus and uh, Harkenbüchse just means I'm not sure if there's really a, an English term for it but Harkenbüchse means like uh, hook gun and it's like I said very, more like a gun not has those more modern features of the arquebus later on and which would be used throughout the next centuries for different kinds of handheld firearms and uh, they had like very um, distinctively a hook at like the end where uh, the end of the barrel basically so it could be stabilized um, or, or placed on fortifications and so on this is what we assume they were used for and those few weapons were already there and also used by the Landsknecht as well um, but then they switched very uh, swiftly towards the Arkebas and this was very uh, famously used by them in their battles. Also quick to note that the Black Army of Hungary which was the private force of the King of Hungary in the late uh, 15th century also used Arkebas so even Hakenbüchsen, not sure about that, but they used Archebuses, so handheld fire weapons, in their army structure in a combined arms um, system. And this is a very interesting point actually, and I was kind of surprised to find this information, that they used it before the Landsknecht basically showed up on a larger scale. And... Um, also in a different way that was quite um, interesting and I will talk about the Black Army of Hungary at a point but uh, the thing is um, it's, it's hard to say who really used it first. We can say that the Black Army of Hungary didn't use it on a wide scale in the sense of it was just one private force. They had battles, they fought once and successively but the point is say that the Landsknechts actually spread it across Europe um, not only themselves but also with their formation with their tactics. So they pushed certainly more the usage of firearms and showed the advantages of it um, but like I said there's also other systems who used firearms arms already or even simultaneously and for example the Black Army of Hungary. So the fire weapon, the firearms are basically the most distinct difference between the Landsknecht formation and the Swiss. Basically the Swiss even didn't have a real place for ranged combat. They were more about the, uh, the charge, I like to call it, not really a classical charge, but in the sense of getting quickly uh, into melee, overwhelming them, uh, the enemy there with their pikes, their halberds, other melee weapons, and very melee-centric. Um, I talked about this in length in my Swiss mercenary tactics video, so check it out if you're not familiar with it or not familiar with the Swiss at all. Uh, very necessary for basically a better understanding if, uh, when I talk here about the Landsknecht. So the Landsknecht used firearms like an like mentioned every time here now but the point is that how they used it it was not in this combined force I mentioned the black, uh, the black army used it was more um, a factor on its own but they really relied on that and anticipated it and planned with it and um, they used it as uh, it could be a force outside of the formation maybe in a not in a real skirmisher role but um, of course outside the formation shooting at the enemy and then retreating in the formation behind the formation where it is safe then maybe shoot again if they, it's possible for them maybe from a fortified higher ground or something like this or they would support a melee of course if it's needed it's hard to say this is definitely possible but this wasn't like their primary role the primary role was to weaken the enemy beforehand before the formation actually engaged with them so it could also be done like outside of the is not outside the formation but basically weaved in the formation so um when the formations would like um, deploy on the battlefield and everything the 
Arquebusier uh, could step out of the formation in an ordered manner, shoot at the enemy and retreat in an ordered manner again so that the formation could then fight. So this can depend on the time, on the formation, on the circumstances, but like I said the main idea is the same, weaken the enemy beforehand. This could also be very easily done with this kind of weapon. Because it was a firearm, it has a lot of power in it. So the thing is that most armor of the day could not stop it. Uh, of course, there were methods of stopping it later. Armor development in shapes or in construction-wise, uh, so in the sense of how their metal worked or what kind of metal they used. But also, of course, to other means like fortifications, like some uh, types of shields, but Basically, it was really hard to avoid the damage firearms could do. And this what counted, of course, for everything, if it was just somebody who was poorly armed or equipped in general towards high knights. And therefore, it was an all-round an all usable weapon. It didn't matter if you would fight against heavy armored opponents or not. Um, the thing was, of course, it didn't have the best effective range. It had a good range, but the accuracy was very poor and very unpredictable. So basically, um, you had to fight or f to shoot, basically, on shorter ranges so that the weapon could do reliable damage. Um, they also shoot it in a, like a battery formation, so in volleys together in one formation not only to make it more, uh, or better to organize or effective to retreat and everything but also that like one volley would really take out some guys at once which could also be a big psychological factor but also a good tactical factor just in having an overview what's happening what's working what's not working and so on so how this firearm really worked they won't go into detail here I will talk in different videos about different kinds of weapons and about um, different types in those weapons like for example this kind of firearm was a smooth barrel fi uh, firearm not a rifled barrel like rifles were and many firearms are today like this so the thing is you have just to know smooth barrel firearms really have poor accuracy but have a good reload time and can be cleaned uh, easily uh, so like more easy or easier than um, the rifled ones. So the thing is they really ride more on uh, reloading fast, shooting melee volleys out and taking out as many guys as possible. You have to keep in mind here the reason why they really needed to do that, like in contrary to the Swiss you may uh, ask yourself why they didn't do it, um, was that the Swiss at the time they were primarily fighting on their own was when they were really unique. So during the wars where they're defending their own city-states against the, Fran uh, the France, against the French, against Against the Habsburgs. So basically, those were the times where it wasn't really needed. But Landsknechts fought against Swiss, fought against other Landsknechts or against other formations who were built up like the Landsknechts. And if the two Pike formations really engage, they basically have the same advantages. And it's really hard to tell who will win. Maybe the side who is better, better equipped, or maybe the side who has more experience, or as accumulation of those things together to have like the best advantage. It's kind of hard to say. Could You just see here that it's unreliable. And this is a big no-go, I would say, in tactics or in warfare to just um, hope it works. I mean, sometimes you have to do it, but the thing is, with what, can, what can you plan, what can you change? And to adapt firearms and to weaken the enemy before, which could also be have done through great swords. I talk about this in my great swords video, or maybe this fall on hope would like pre-engage the enemy um, in melee to really weaken it before the actual formations engage, or maybe weaken it like during the melee, the engagement. So the thing is to take out pikes or halberds out of the enemy before you engage gives you a huge advantage if then he has just lesser pikes he is not as defendable and this is why i talk about also in my pikes video a lot how pikes really worked how easily it was to make them work and so on so to taking out guys beforehand was a really good advantage you could rely on and then uh, this was the reason why they adopted it of course but like I said they had to fight against different kinds of formations, different kinds of enemies they could of course also use crossbows but crossbows are easier defended against than firearms and the, uh, this was pr probably the reason they used more firearms they could really rely on they can take out everything this hits um, when it hits, basically it doesn't matter if it's a really good equipped like officer, knight, whatever, or if it's just somebody who just grabbed the pike and uh, he was like said, stand here, hold it and done. And this was one of the big factors. We have to keep in mind another big factor is actually like uh, the moral aspect. The thing is, 
not only can you defend easy against arrows and then crossbow bolts, it's also be because they are coming and you kind of know, okay, they use crossbows or bows, but I have armor, I have shields, and this is also the time where basic armor was widespread, basic good armor, basically, I want to say. So that's, that's the thing is, you know, okay, I can't survive it, it just doesn't do something weird, it's like, or if it's just an obscure low chance. So basically, I maybe have some arrows stuck in my gambeson or so, but I will be fine. So the thing is, with firearms, but like I said, it was very... Uh, hard to defend against them. It could be done and later on actually types of armor developed into it But they were expensive of course and some types of shields could do it But they were not really usable so much with the pikes together or also more expensive So the thing is you kind of know if I get hit I'm out of here um, So basically I'm dead. Or I'm uh, grievously uh, wounded so the thing is if you just see those smokes coming up and you hear the thundering and everything, you know oh, this is really bad for me. So this could also lead to mercenaries, to the, this could lead to mercenaries easier routing, uh, which could be a game-changing factor in a match. But of course, if both sides use firearms, they both has those advantages, and then it gets more into the aspect of do I want to equip my troops better or do I adapt other tactics, use cavalry and so on and so on. And um, this is basically the reason um, why the firearm was overall so important as a firearm itself. Also, it was just available. This is another big point here. It was a good field weapon in itself. You could rely on it. Of course, it had missed uh, errors or misfunctions, but the thing is you could rely on it as a weapon. It worked and uh, you could field it easily. It was, uh, you could carry it and everything and um, make the powder beforehand, so on, so on. So basically, it was just available and very effective for what it was needed. So basically, this is all about the range combat. Not so complex, actually. It's really more about the uh, uh, really uh, standing out here that it's a big difference to the Swiss. I think it's the most important thing. But uh, of course, later on, we see more usage of firearms in warfare. Also, a reason is the Landsknecht formation. They, of course, push this, mean, mean they spread it firearms. Probably not only them, of course, but this was a big factor because Landsknecht quickly um, actually formed different formations throughout Europe and also fighting in different armies throughout Europe. So, this was a big factor. So, um, this was for this video and click here if you want to see the next video or click here to start the whole playlist um, from the start. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Give it a like. If so, please subscribe to my channel and uh, see you soon.